Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Benilde St. Margaret's McQuinn Complex for tonight's North Suburban Girls Soccer Matchup between the Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights, the number one team in Class A and defending state champions. So they take on inner city rival St. Louis Park. I am Andrew Berkeley, and we're proud here at Park TV to bring you tonight's game. I'm also joined by Dale Tatarek for the broadcast. Yes, I'm. Uh, been broadcasting at the St. Louis Park Stadium a couple of games, and I'm glad to join Andrew and mm -hmm. be able to throw in a few tidbits for the St. Louis Park girls, mm -hmm. a younger uh, team <laughs> that's uh, on the rise. Yes, the Red Knights, as I've stated for Class A champs, but St. Louis Park is a team that is coming into today's game looking to possibly pull the upset. They are coming off a 1-0 loss to Bloomington Jefferson, but they also do have a 2-2-1 two, two conference record. Uh, yes, they got. Uh, they had some close games there. They have three, two, one losses, and a couple of them they got behind in the first few minutes, uh, and then basically played the whole game with uh, winning attitude. But uh, uh, you got to play that whole game from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Probably the big headline for tonight for the Red Knights will be senior. Will be the goalkeeper change. Number 25, Angela Charlie, a senior, suffered an ankle injury in yesterday's practice, and that means freshman Maya Berg is going to take the start for the Red Knights, her first career start, as we are underway with the Red Knights taking possession, and it's deflected off of, off of Maria Van Hove, and will be a goal kick for the Orioles. And the Orioles have Anna Rothler, a ninth grader for goalie two. This is the second game of a boys-girls doubleheader between these two schools. The boys are won the first game between these two with a very impressive 6-0 victory. As the Red Knights now play it back, they play three back in the defense. Barger and Oppenheimer on the edges. Allie Coughlin, a junior, takes the middle at the sweeper position. Yeah, Ellen Adelman kind of stopped that uh, from St. Louis Park side from going through. And Anna Huber in defense is moving it up now for uh, St. Louis Park. Passes outside Lauren McManus. Those are two uh, captains for the team. Red Knight's last game was this past Saturday against the Hopkins Royals. And it was a very disappointing game for the Red Knights. They've suffered a 2-1 loss with a late goal coming by Hopkins and after the game and at the next practice it really looked like the girls tried to get a little more focused and, re and just get their season back on track. Yeah, St. Louis Park had an identical score against Hopkins early in the season. 2-1 uh, being ahead 1-0 at the first half. Catapotis within the middle for the Red Knights. Plays it out towards Oppenheimer. She is unable to keep it in. It will be a throw in for the Orioles. And Maddie Brumner's throwing it in for uh, St. Louis Park. Down the line to Alan Edelman. Ball is kicked off Tatterin. Tatterin, her brother is Taras Tatterin of the boys soccer team. And they are both very talented players. Tatterin, the second lead scorer on the Red Knights. As the ball is sent up, and Maria Van Hove with it for the Red Knights, but the play is caught by the Orioles. Edelman heads it out. Ooh, a little collision there. And Brumner takes the kick. That's uh, Maddie Brumner. There's two uh, Brumners on this team. Barger taking the step and clearing it for the Red Knights as they are able to get on. Now they will look to transition. And Tatarik kicks it back up and then uh, Liss is moving it up. St. Louis Park's down the side. Oppenheimer to Tatarin. Tatterin takes it back and she'll play it back to Coughlin. She has Barger and Schmitz in support. We want that. 
Barger splits the defense, finds Burns, and it's taken back outside now to Emily Schmitz. She's a sophomore defender and midfielder for the Red Knights. And the ball goes out. It'll be a throw in for the Red Knights taken by Schmitz. Ball's kept in, and now the Red Knights with a chance, and it's kicked just a little too hard out, and it will be, oh, it looks like it's it took a, a deflection, actually. It looks like a corner kick. Alexa Tatterin will take the goal kick, or take the corner kick for the Red Knights. Eight players in the box for Benilde St. Margaret's, or nine, seven players. Barger and Oppenheimer back. It's sent in towards Panic. Oh. And it goes just over the goal. Yeah, St. Louis Park lost that last game one to zero um, yeah, on a corner kick like that with a header. So they've been uh, practicing. <laughs> corner kicks are one of those plays where you just have to make sure you're marked up well on defense and you're on your offense. Just getting a touch on the ball can cause a lot of problems in the box. Panic collects the goal kick, but she's dispossessed by an Oriole. And Liss drives it up for the Orioles, and Adelman sprinting down the side for it, getting ready for a cross. Uh, Coughlin with the challenge, goes out. It'll be a throw in for the Orioles. And Clavercomps with it, uh, St. Louis Park. Ball sent out. And it will go out off Tatter, and it'll be a throw in for St. Louis Park. And Brumner to less to get things going here. It's like it's out on St. Louis Park. Adelman tried to uh, catch that one, but not able to. Tattern within, she'll play it back to Barger. Barger takes a touch, and it's played back to Schmitz. Schmitz right away to Coughlin. Red Knights like to play out the back, get the defense moving, and trying to find some holes that they can take advantage of. Here's Catapotis to Tatterin. Back to Catapotis. She is a seat, one of the three senior captains on this Red Knights squad. She well, was a first a member of the team in 2010 as a freshman and has established herself as one of the top center mids in the state. Here's a chance deflected off an Oriole and cleared to Panic. Panic, just high. Yeah, St. Louis Park also has uh, three senior captains all on the field, uh, Tatarek, Adelman, and uh, McManus. And then Huber is a junior captain. This is the first year they've done the junior captain to kind of get the year-to-year uh, -year, mm -hmm. um, uh, overlap. <laughs> Goal kick for the Orioles. Sent to about the 30. A deflection will take it back to Coughlin, who plays to Barger. Barger with a touch and finds Mimi Burns in the middle. Tattern now. Bremner playing her tight for her defense. Tatterin's one of those players you have to stay tight on. She's got great speed down the middle, but also very good ball skills. And it has led her to be the second lead scorer in the Red Knights with 12 goals and 12 assists. Coughlin dribbles it down the sideline, finds Panic. Panic with a wafting ball to Tatterin, and the Red Knights might have something here. Uh, Huber's defending. And Liss takes the ball and drives it out. Ball kicked out, throwing for the Red Knights. It's eight minutes into the game. No score here in this matchup of two St. Louis Park City rivals. Okay, Tarek defending, and Huber kicks it out. Now Clavercamp's got it for Park and passing it up to Basil. Basil scoring two goals in the last game. She's challenged by Barger and it's kicked out. Oppenheimer to take the throw in. 
Assessing her options and she'll play it to Tatarin. Gets the touch. Oppenheimer is able to recover. It's taken by the Orioles. Barger deflects it. Okay, Huber with it in the middle. Back to Tatarik. Up to Adelman. And to Liss. And St. Louis Park's moving around a little bit. Bremner a long kick. Here come the Red Knights up the side. Nice little give and go play. Played through towards Tatarin. She's got one on one. We'll look to get that right foot and curl it inside. Here's a chance, a shot. Took it to flex. She'll be a corner kick for the Red Knights, their second of the game. Looks like St. Louis Park has some subs getting ready to come in across the field, so a little bit hard to distinguish them right now. Tadron takes the corner for the Red Knights, 10 minutes in. It's a line drive towards the edge of the box. Here's a header just over. It'll be a goal kick for the Orioles. And the game for the Orioles. Number eight, Abigail Bremner. Number 15, Allie Simonette. Number 12, Madeline Jerk. So just announcer of the subs for St. Louis Park, uh, number eight, Abby Bremner. And number 15, Allie Simonette, uh, forward. And number 12, Madeline Jerk. Yeah, goal kick for the Orioles. Neither team with a shot on goal so far. Reddits have had a few sail over the bar via cross or shot. So neither team really having a golden opportunity so far in this game. Yeah, it seems like it's uh, just feeling things out for right now. Mm -hmm. St. Louis Park ran a few down the sideline but couldn't uh, uh, get anything crossed over. Here's Panic in the middle for the Red Knights. About 25 yards out, looking to create some space. There's a nice little foot move and finds Schmitz on the edge of the box. She's denied, wins it back. And is taken by the Red Knights. A nice through ball to Tatarin. To Panic, here's a shot. Goes wide, it'll be a goal kick for the Orioles. So number nine, Maddie Bremner's taking the goal kick while uh, Anna Rothler uh, tends the goal. Coughlin with it at the, about the 50 yard line, threads it through the middle to Emma Vanderheide. Vanderheide gets it into Tatarin. It's grabbed by Catapotis back to Vanderhyde. And here's some space now for a shot. And it's a great save by Roffler tipping it onto the post. And the ball stayed in play and it's still moving. Mimi Burns with the shot for the Red Knights. They're first on target in the game. So here's Catapotis. Looking for some space. Unable to find it, it's cleared by the Orioles. Yeah, Huber kicks it back, gets back across center field. Looks like it's going out for a throw in. Here's Schmitz. And she'll play it up to Panic. Panic is the Red Knights' leading scorer on the year. 13 assists, 15 goals. She's also one of the top hockey players in the nation. She played for the U-17 USA Olympic team in, the, in one of their recent competitions and was a silver medalist. Wow, that's fantastic. 
She is committed to play at the University of Minnesota next year for hockey. Oh, that's great. Going to a, a very strong team. Burns within, she'll play it back. Barger with it. Plays to Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer will just boot it up to Panic, but is intercepted by the Orioles. So Liss has it, moves it up. Uh, Simonet grabbing it, moving it around for St. Louis Park to Liss and launches it over. It looks like Adelman's running down the side. Maybe she can, no, she could not get a cross off. All right. Oppenheimer draws the throw in deep in Red Knight territory. St. Louis Park doesn't have a shot on goal yet, but they've had a few good chances down the side you just haven't been able to get a cross off. So Brumner defending there, they're keeping it. And a lot of Park players right around there but couldn't uh, take it away. And here come the Red Knights, Vanderheide's pass taken away and here come the Orioles. And that was Abigail Bremner with the ball. Uh, Abby Bremner's playing midfield where her, uh, where Maddie is playing uh, defense. Pattern. Kicking it back. Go and goes out. And Tarek uh, with that stop. <coughs> Throw in the Catapotus. Plays it to Coughlin. Takes a weird hop, does a little step over and will find Barger. And the Red Knights will shift and look to restart out of the back. St. Louis Park has a sub waiting there, so it sounds like, looks like they'll probably be subbing a little bit more, just trying to get things felt out here. a trip there by Orioles. It results in a free kick for the Red Knights. That was uh, Maddie Bremner that that foul was against as she was running, running down the ball from behind. Katie Oppenheimer, one, another senior captain for the Red Knights, will take it. She lofts it high and over everyone. It's headed back, and say it was Park will take possession in the midfield. Yeah. Here's Tatterin. Cross in. Deflected out. Corner kick Red Knights, their third of the game. That was Liss uh, basically blocking the ball from uh, penetrating in the goal area. And then it deflected off her and out. Oh, is that what you want to get? The orange blanket? <laughs> Pattern taking it for Red Knights. The orange blanket. And here's the kick. Little lofting. Keeper stays. Schmidt's battling for it. And here comes Kelly Panic now. Panic with a move. Plays it toward the middle. It's deflected out. Well, park defense holding strong on these corner kicks. Here's Mimi Burns, unable to thread the needle. And it will be cleared as Schmitz will get to the ball. It's kind of passed outside, but uh, Maddie Jerf wasn't able to get to that for Park, so. They're trying to get it to the outside, but not able to uh, um, get everything completely through. Ball will roll out for a red night throw in. And both teams have substitutions. So Marin Noble. Entering the game for the Red Knights. She's a freshman, one of the four freshmen on the team for the Red Knights. And for St. Louis Park, uh, Jane Stevenson, a uh, defender, and Emily Hines, uh, forward coming into the game. It's like they've switched their forwards three times, trying to keep some fresh legs to uh, chase down the defense. 
be a Oppenheimer throw in, headed away and kicked high into the air. It's gathered by Harkin, a little header back by Coughlin. So it was part maybe with a chance to counter. And Hines was just in the game, was dribbling it around. Edelman and Oppenheim were going. Here's Edelman with a switch. No one there for the Orioles. Number 15, Jordan Mattis giving chase. And it's played into the middle where Panic collects. Panic tripped up. No foul called. Marin. And Tatarix with the ball and uh, playing defense moves it up. Ball sent wide. It's going to result in a throw in for the Red Knights. We're almost halfway through the first half. Red Knights with one shot on goal and three corner kicks with no goals as a result as we're tied at zero in this opening half. Schmitz racing to the ball where it's grabbed by Red Knights, sent in towards Catapotis. And Tateric takes a big kick, gets it out of there for uh, St. Louis Park. Good step by Tateric on there, providing the Red Knights from advancing the ball any further. Coughlin finding. Now Hubert getting it out. Panic and Hubert with the steal. Ball sent over. Yeah, so far this game has been mostly in St. Louis Park's territory. The defense pushing it out. Coughlin finds Oppenheimer. She'll save it and she'll find Tatter. And Oppenheimer going down the sideline, looking for the ball. Catapotis holds on to it. Jane Stevenson defending tight there. She recently came in. And Coughlin will take the space, finds Panic. Panic threats the kneel. Here comes, here's a chance for Mattis. Inside the box, it's a shot. And it's a great save by Roffler. Saved out, so another corner kick. Just a great through ball, and Mattis takes a touch. Looks to go into, it looks like the, just maybe to the left of the goalie a little high, and Roffler just knocks it out. Fourth corner kick of the game for the Red Knights. It's up. Keeper comes out. Oh, and a header in. And it's a goal for the Red Knights. Kelly Panic collecting the trash and puts it into the back of the net. With 17.59 left in this first half, the Red Knights take a one nothing lead. As you can see the ball, Rother went out, didn't get touched off goal, exposed, and Panic had probably one of the easiest headers of her career right there. Yes, that was uh, wide open and uh, she finished. Panic with her 14th goal, correction, 16th goal on the season. Alexa Tatarin. Alexa Tatarin collecting the assists, her 13th of the year. Yeah, as you were talking about earlier, those corner kicks, just uh, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. And they bounce around and you put them in the right spot. <laughs> It'll be a throw in for the Orioles. Flex off the Red Knights. Another throw in for St. Louis Park. No no substitutions. Brubaker. 
Number 25, Elena Basil. So just in, yeah, for St. Louis Park, Elena Basil, number 25, and 10, uh, Becca Brubaker. Her father is the assistant head coach. Oh, that's great. Here's Catapotis with the ball for the Red Knights. And is deflected off her, and Tatum will be a throw in for the Orioles. And Jane Stevenson taking that. Did that defense and then throw it in. Stevenson is number 57, an unusually high number for a soccer player, you could say. Yeah, I think uh, St. Louis Park uh, took the philosophy of all their players have a number. <laughs> so you, there's no duplicates between uh, uh, varsity, JV, and ninth grade. So Here's a through ball in Berg with her first save of the first action of the game. She responds well, coming out to take the potentially dangerous ball. And now plays it short to Schmitz in the with the chance to run for the Red Knights. But that was probably the first real good opportunity St. Louis Park had on the offensive end. Rothor making the pickup. Yeah, Elena Basil was the one uh, on that through ball, and she scored uh, two against South in a 3-0 win uh, this past week. Here's Catapotis now sending it. Here comes Rother out, and she will get there before Tatter. And a good idea by Catapotis to hit the outside. A short play now by the Orioles. And to Lauren McManus, one of the captains. And Panic, looking for space. Working with the ball. Yeah, Becca Brubaker playing it tight. Tight defense. That's nice job by the Orioles there. You're fine with Panic going side to side, but when she's going forward, she's nearly unstoppable. And that was some very nice individual defense right there. Oppenheimer. Looks like Stevenson with that. Block turns into a corner. Fifth corner kick of the game for the Red Knights. They scored their blown goal off of a corner kick. Let's see if how this one is defended. As we have a substitution for the Red Knights as Maria Van Hove comes into the game for the Red Knights. And the whistle and the kick. Tatter takes it and Rothler gets a touch on it. Coughlin gets here, it's sent back out. And is the scrub for and then it's a great save by Rothor. That was a reaction save right there. And it results in a throw. And as you can see, Tadrin puts the ball back in. Rothor comes out, it's deflected. Catapotis just turns on net and Rothor with a great reaction. Emma Vanderheide's shot is blocked and it's cleared by the Orioles. Anna Barger now. Looking to create some havoc in the Orioles at zone. A little tight defense right on the line there. That sideline acting is almost a second defender in that situation, but Barger does well to keep it in. As is won by Schmitz and played through to Noble. Noble accelerates up the middle, finds Emma Vanderheide. Vanderheide keeps it in, finds Schmitz, played into Panic. Panic's got almost had some space. Catapotis now controlling. It was Park with pretty much 10, almost their entire team in the box. It's Capos makes a run, and Rothler will pick it up. Yeah, St. Louis Park's gonna have to find a way to move it around a bit more. I think this is the widest field in the state, so it's something to get used to. Yeah, and <laughs> challenge for most teams coming here 
with just the wide field and not being used to it. Here's a chance for a and through em ball. Emily Hines attack. Oh. Barger right there. Plays to Oppenheimer. Barger now finds Oppenheimer and Barger receives a great run. Frustrated, has no one to pass to. She'll keep it up the middle. And now she stops, turns and looks for space. Seems like a little slick there. Stevenson just kind of <laughs> fell down on her own. She recovers and is going to draw. Oh, the ball goes out, it's a red knight throw and panic takes it quickly, finds Vanderhyde. And a great defensive play by the Orioles to get it out. To Tarek defending and Huber backing up and moving it out. Oppenheimer crosses it in. And it is cleared again by St. Louis Park. So the Orioles defense, so if you take away that one corner. Looks like Basil's got it, moving down. And here comes the Orioles. Basil the Hines. So St. Louis Park showing signs of life on offense with that counter attack. Just a through ball that went a little too far is Berg with the punt to around the 50. It bounces and is gathered by St. Louis Park. And as possession changes, it's the Orioles reestablishing and there's a through ball that takes a deflection. And Maya Berg once again on her alert and awake back in her box and comes out to scoop it up. A little bit shorter of a punt. <laughs> Maria Van Hove, here's a chance to Tannerin. Takes a deflection. And see what we have. It bounces off the stick. And the corner's going to be a throw in for the Red Knights. A little bit of a collision in the box there. <laughs> Andrea Savage checking it for Red Knights, a senior forward. St. Louis Park made a couple of substitutions there as well. Number four, Ellen Edelman. Four, Ellen Edelman back in. And 22, Mariel Aver Clavercamp. Also in the game, number nine, Madeline Bremner. Madeline Bremner, Maddie Bremner is what she goes by back in the game. Rothler with the hole. We've got nine minutes left in this first half. One nothing Red Knights. Panic from Tatarin. Orioles push up a little more and it causes the Red Knights a little trouble. Lifts out to Bremner. And Samantha Bear moves it and uh, the Orioles are running down the sideline. Here come the Orioles, but Schmitz is back and will sacrifice a throw in to help her team regroup and mark up. Here's a touch and it's cleared out. Kept in by Schmitz, finds panic and now the Red Knights are looking to counter. Pack with a line drive cross. It's found by Savedra and tried to dump it off to Tatarin, but I think there was maybe a little miscommunication there. Adelman runs it down the side and tries to put it in the center. And there's a, a battle for the ball here. Oppenheimer battling for Red Knights against Tatarik of the Orioles. Or Yep, she settles it there and it looks like a little bit of movement here for the Orioles. So a little flare by the Orioles midfield gets some of the Park fans that have traveled out here. A pretty good contingent of black and orange into the stands for today's rivalry game. As Coughlin brings it up now for the Red Knight. She plays a long through ball and Tatarin's going to have to use her speed here. Tatarin gets a touch and she has the inside. Plays a cross into Savedra. And Tatarin gets it out. Mm -hmm. 
panic with it for the Red Knights. Lauren McManus, another captain defending there. Here's Schmitz. Ball curls in. Not the most not the most prominent of clearances we've seen tonight, but we'll do the trick as Panic now plays it back to Noble. Noble. And she will draw a corner kick as both teams get ready to make substitutions. Hannah Huber's back in the game. Uh, junior captain, taller player, key to have in there for these corner kicks. Here's the corner and Rothler holds on. Now she's getting used to him now. <laughs> yeah, very pretty, not bad defense there by the Orioles. Rothler doing a nice job controlling the box. So that's the one miscue that lets the Red Knights go. But otherwise, St. Louis Park has done a nice job defending those Red Knight corner kicks. Kiara Klatko checked in for the Red Knights at that last substitution. Now Panic has some space. Looks to get a shot off. Takes a deflection in the box. It will be cleared. Oh, Schmitz, there's a battle for it, and then that ball that looks so innocent took a funny hop, and Tadron was almost there to put it in. Yeah, Roffler could not um, pull it in, just the funny bounce. <laughs> One of those balls that just you, takes a funnier hop than you expect on this turf, and it almost results in a red night goal. Very dangerous with those bounces in front of the goalie and an uh, aggressive uh, forward coming in there. Well, Tatarek going to take the goal kick. Panic goes over as there's a little unconventional of a way of letting the keeper get the ball on that header. Takes a little communication to, <laughs> yeah, to to let it. I guess they call that a nutmeg back to your. Yeah. But if you uh, communicate and do that. Coughlin lets the ball roll out. It will be a throw in for the Red Knights. 1 0. BSM in El San Marcos with the lead. Panic from Tatarin at 7 with 17.59 to play. It's the game's lone goal. Header from Huber to Adelman. St. Louis Park has had a few opportunities lately to possibly even up the score. But Maya Berg, the freshman goalie for the Red Knights, has. Been up to the task and come out. Well, St. Louis Park throw. Adelman with the throw. <laughs> Rubaker. Rubaker moves it through. We're going on the. Oppenheimer. Coughlin's clearance attempt is deflected and will result in a throw in. And another throw in off of Adelman's foot. Locking it and keeping it in the zone. Charlie finds, or correction, Oppenheimer finds panic. And, and Adelman crossing it in there. Catapotis to panic, and panic leads Oppenheimer down the side. Where she's got some space, and Tadron on her left. She'll play it down. Tatarin with a nice move, has space in the 18 and draws the corner kick. The seventh of the game for the Red Knights. A lot of those corner kicks were uh, St. Louis Park's defense just forcing them, forcing them down on the line and then getting it kicked into themselves. Here's the kick, it's in towards the box and the front post player coming up with the header. Tattering with some more time, it's sent in. And then, ooh, looks like another corner kick. Maybe not, not the most convincing of crosses as we see on the replay. The front post player just gets her head on the ball. 
clears it out, but Tanner was given too much time and was able to put a ball back into the box. <coughs> Here's the corner. Bounces through Coughlin. Uh, Rother making the save. 90 seconds left in this first half. And Rother with the quick play with the throw. And the Orioles will look to possibly set up a little possession here in the last minute of the first half. Yeah, they kick some of those long lofting throws, but they're not able to uh, connect yet. But Stevenson taking it outside to Huber. One minute remaining. One minute. Huber to Stevenson back and forth there and out of bounds. Less than a minute. Oppenheimer's throw is headed by Tatera. Right. It's now Panic looking to make some move. 40 seconds left. Great defense once again by the Orioles, but Panic's able to pull off a beautiful ball towards Maria Van Hove, a freshman for the Red Knights. She plays it back to Schmitz. Schmitz with a low, dangerous cross, and it's taken out by the Orioles, but right to Marin Noble. Yep, Tatarek stopped that one and passed it out, and 10 seconds left. And there's some movement in the last few seconds. They need to take a shot now. And the horn sounds before anything could happen for the Orioles. And we head into halftime. The score, one nothing. Benel St. Margaret's on the goal from Kelly Panic. We'll be back with the second half after this halftime break. Spinelt St. Margaret's for this girls' soccer matchup with two North Suburban rivals, Spinelt St. Margaret's Red Knights and the St. Louis Park Orioles. Spinelt St. Margaret's has a 1 0 lead after the first half, with Kelly Panic scoring a lone goal with an assist to, elect from, to, for, to Alexa Tadron on a corner kick. Red Knights have so far really just dominated the game offensively, recording four shots on goal and collecting eight corner kicks. St. Louis Park has shown some life on the offensive end the last, in the last half of the first 40 minutes. As right now, St. Louis Park takes it in. I'm Andrew Berkeley. I'm joined by Dale Tatarek for tonight's game in what is the last matchup of these two teams in the North, while they are North Suburban Conference affiliates. Next year, both these schools will be joined a part of the Metro West Conference as Barger sends a th through ball. And then it's cleared into the middle. Yeah, Tatarek settled that and moved it out back. By Tatarek. So yeah, thanks for the introduction, Andrew. This should be a good second half here. Really crucial that the Red Knights get this next goal. And uh, want to make sure you can put a team like, say, don't want to give St. Louis Park a chance to Get in, but also for the Orioles, getting that goal, it's a good way to hope, if you can get it early enough, it sets the momentum for the second half. You can get the Red Knights off guard and play maybe a little more defensive than usual, and maybe you're able to net, net a second one and, and possibly get the win. Panic with the header. Alexa Tattern with it for the Red Knights, takes it down the line. And, and Rolfler dives on it. Rolfler having a pretty impressive game so far. She's made some. Nice saves on some point blank shots, and has been, for the most part, dealing with corner kicks very well. 
Yeah, as we were talking earlier, I think this game is key for both teams for section seeding or even uh, I think uh, the Red Knights can get a very high seed and even St. Louis Park, a very tough section, could possibly uh, get a home game if they uh, can play this game really tough. Here's a shot by, it looks like Barger coming up from her, or no correction, that's Mimi Burns, it looks like. Yep, yeah, coming up. You can just get a shot off from outside the 18. And it'll be a goal kick for the Orioles. And Tatera kicked that goal kick up and stops it again, moves it in the center, and a couple of kicks up to get the ball out to midfield. Here's Megan Catapotis for the Red Knights, plays it back to Schmitz. Schmitz back to Catapotis. Catapotis sends a through ball to Emma Vanderheide. Her touch is a little off and will result in a goal kick for the Orioles. Orioles next game is their senior night game against Columbia Heights this Thursday. And what would be, looks like a very winnable game for the Orioles. Yeah, so it, it will be based on uh, everything we know. There are uh, about uh, five or six uh, seniors that play on the JV team, so they will all get that opportunity to play. Benel St. Margaret's girls soccer senior night will be this Saturday when they host South St. Paul, a team they've defeated twice as Panic with the Nutmeg to Capotis. They defeated South St. Paul as two years ago in the state's quarterfinals as a Capotis sends a dangerous ball into the box. And then last year, the Reddits defeated South St. Paul three to two in the state semifinals on a Dana Buckhorn free kick. Red Knights with possession in the St. Louis Park half. It's Kelly Panic, just nearly impossible to take her off the ball. She's got space. And Saavedra's shot is blocked by an Oriole defender. Yeah, Anna Huber was right in the right spot to block that with her body. St. Louis Park's had a few nice block shots, not letting the ball get through all the way to goal. Panic lays it off to Catapotis. Catapotis looking for panic on the inside, but now she's found herself some space. There's a shot just wide. Now Catapotis there might have had tattered on the outside, so a pass was an option too, but she elected to take it herself. Okay, a goal kick. Tatarik taking the kick. Rolfler protecting the goal. Right into park players and move it up past midfield. Barger taken down by... That was uh, Basil, Basil, Elena Basil. She's a strong uh, <laughs> hockey player. <laughs> Referee hasn't had much to call in this game. Very, you could say not, just not much fouls or contact to be had in this matchup of two rivals, but I think he'll take it that way. I think uh, the, wide, the wide field might make it uh, Spread out a little bit more at times. Teams play it right. Yeah. Here's Catapotis plays to Vanderhyde. And the ball is deflected. Tatarik moves it around and moves it out so that can St. Louis Park can reset. Catapotis looking to be an offensive threat. Plays to Burns. Here's a shot, takes a deflection. You know, trying to run it down. Oh, couldn't avoid that corner kick. Took an unfortunate deflection. It will be the ninth corner kick for the Red Knights on the game. Thirty-three fifty-two left in the game as Tatterin takes the corner. It's a high arcing ball, the edge of the six. Bounces in and it's cleared out. The Red Knights will look to get it back in. Tanner's shot takes a deflection and then it's blocked and finally cleared. It was uh, List making the kick to clear it. And Basil fighting for 
Here's Barger. Plays a ball to number 15, Jordan Mattis. Burns back to Panic. Panic just a force in the midfield, controlling the ball for the Red Knights, distributing and scoring when needed. Here's a, a cross header. in, and it's headed out. That was by Anna Huber with that header, getting the ball out of there. Park's defense is having a pretty solid game. Very few missed marks, and when they've failed to clear the ball, Rothler has had a very solid game in that. St. Louis Park looking to get a counterattack going. It's taken by the Red Knights. And now it's back in the middle with Panic. Yeah, there's a clever camp trying to take it from her. Come up from behind, a little push in right there. And uh, uh, St. Louis Park, a little touch in the ball, but it goes out. Some subs warming up for St. Louis Park. St. Louis Park has subbed a lot more than the Red Knights this game. Just trying to keep some fresh legs in there, constantly rotating as there's a battle for it. And it's gonna be a throw in for the Orioles. So Emily Hines back in the game. Emily Hines is a forward. She scored a lot of St. Louis Park goals early on in the season. And she had a foot injury for a bit that she's recovered from. She was. And it's out. Looks like a Red Knight throw. Here's the throw in as there's a step by Tatarin. She's got options up the middle. She elects to play it back to Catapotis. Catapotis makes a nice in it opening and closing and of her hips and now it's taken by the Orioles. That was a Huber on defense, was able to kick it, follow it and kick it again, move it up to the center. Allie Coughlin now plays to Catapotis. And she'll play it out to Mattis. That's an offside call. And the referee with an offsides call. A little bit of disapproval from the Red Knight fans <laughs> there. Possibly, understandably so. It's always a close one usually with those offsides. Yeah, I guess we're at a bit of an angle here though. Mm -hmm. Tatarek taking the kick. The indirect uh, free kick. Tattery with it, she's got panic on the wide side. Panic with a chance. Rothler with the save. Great positioning there by the freshman goalie, making her fourth save of the game. As here come the Red Knights against, deflected off yeah. of Tatterin. It's gonna result in a throw in, as we have three St. Louis Park subs coming in with 30 minutes left in the game. So that was Tatarek kicking that one, so that it went out. Abby Bremner in the game. So Ali Simonet and Madeline Jerf coming in, and it seems like they're the coach is putting in fresh legs, usually up front, so they can uh, the forwards can be fresh to try to run down the ball here. Trying to get that counter attack in case there's a turnover or something. Red Knights have. Three defenders and Catapotis dropping back. So St. Louis Park's gonna probably have to either get a really lucky bounce or establish something in the midfield and bring it up. Here's Panic for the Red Knights, and it's a turnover. And now St. Louis Park with some options down the end. Ali Simonette trying to move the ball through. Ball deflected by Mattis. And what are we going to have here? Looks like uh, referee rules corner. Yeah, oh, Huber was, was off of Huber, and she was laying on the ground there. Mm -hmm. When it was 50-50 balls, and it just takes a deflection. And it's going to result in the 10th corner kick of the game for the Red Knights. Yeah, Anna Rothler's kind of standing in the back of the net so she can move up, and she's moving up to grab it, and she does. 
both are having a, doing a nice job on the corner kicks. He does have that one that she did not quite get result in the goal, but otherwise, the St. Louis Park has shown a very nice job at defending corner kicks, something that you mentioned that they struggled at a little bit earlier in the season. Yeah, and Rofler is a ninth grader, so she's got a, a long high school career here. To mm -hmm. St. Louis Park has a lot, several ninth graders on their team. A lot of them play for the St. Louis Park Soccer Association. Here come team. the Orioles. Here's a chance, a shot takes a deflection. It's laying there in the box and it's cleared by the Red Knights. Here's a shot, deflection, Good. Berg making the save. A lot of activity right in front of the goal there. He just couldn't get the right person to shift to swing it in there. Just. A very unfortunate unfor there wasn't a player closer for the Orioles. And it took a deflection, it looks like, at the last second. And Berg did a nice job staying in line with the ball. Here come the Red Knights now. Vanderheide shot. Rothler with another save. Tatterin, though, comes out with it. A little bit of back and forth action now. Both these teams. Catapotis with it. Catapotis. Hesitation. Looking to get some space. Taking a flexion off her left foot before she shot, messing her up. It's going to result in a goal kick. So substitutions for both teams, a goal kick. Things kind of settle down after a back and forth uh, period there. And those are the opportunities the Orioles are going to look for throughout the game, just getting that run in and hopefully getting something past Berg. But when you do get those opportunities, you have to finish them. Panic with the ball to Mattis. Mattis enters inside the 18-yard box, tries to get around, and a great defensive play by, I believe that was number 10, Brubacher. Brubaker. Yeah. Brubaker to shield the ball and draw a goal kick. Again for the Orioles, number 57, Dave Stevenson. Look at that high number back in here. Jane Stevenson's a defender. We've got uh, uh, Sophia Roloff, who's a defender or a defensive. Uh, and, uh, whoa! And Vanderheide scores for the Red Knights. And as you can see, just one of those very, un Vanderheide just got to the goal kick, a little low and flat, and it was a one-on-one -on -one battle for the ball, and she just won it and shifted it right by Rothler, who had no chance. So at 14.09 of the second half, Emma Vanderheide scores to give the Red Knights the 2-0 lead. lead. It is her sixth goal of the season. Yeah, that 2-0 score will make it uh, tougher for St. Louis Park now. They're running down the sideline. Well, that's got to be really disheartening as they had a golden opportunity to get a goal and to not be able to. And then a few minutes later, Red Knights come back and just put a, increase their lead even more as there's a missed clearance by Oppenheimer. Did not touch the ball and will go out for a throw for the Red Knights. There's 15 minutes remaining. As Kara Klacko returns into the game for the Red Knights. Red Knights have eight shots on goal. Rothler making six saves. St. Louis Park with one shot on goal. Berg making one save. Yeah, moves down and out again, so. There's a long kick there. Ali <laughs> Simonet trying to run it down with the. Barger elected to play it wide there instead of back to the keeper. And the Orioles will take possession, but there's a great step by Katie Oppenheimer. And there's some great movement by the Red Knights in the midfield. Here comes Jordan Mattis. Enters inside the box, too big of a touch. 
and Rothler collects. But great move in the midfield by Red Knights. Vanderheid foul panic and panics in a nice through ball to Mattis, who is unable to convert. And now it's Mimi Burns making the step. Comes down the side. There's the chance. Takes the flex. It's a goal for the Red Knights. Those crossing shots are really tough for the defense to. Uh... <laughs> Rothler was relying on our defense there to be marked up, and just the one runner got free, and it's deflection. So we have Burns sending it in, and it's going to be Tatterin who records the goal. Seemed like St. Louis Park was really trying to play up and with uh, try to get something going offensively more and playing a very defensive game here. Short for the Red Knights, number four, Alexa Tanner. The assist of the goal goes to number two, Emily Schmitz. Tanner Schmitz. So they're giving Schmitz to credit. I believe it was Burns on the assist, but no matter what, Tadron has scored. It's her 13th goal of the season, giving and along with her assists earlier tonight, she now has 26 points on the season. Goal coming at 16-26 of the second half, and the Red Knights increase their lead to three nothing. Well, Hines moving the ball, and there they're kicking it down. Uh, St. Louis Park's getting it down the sideline here. Oppenheimer with the clearance. St. Louis Park with a throw. St. Louis Park has three subs. Number two, Bailey Liss. Number seven, Lauren McManus. Number 22, Marielle Cleverkamp. Liss, uh, McManus, and Cleverkamp coming back in the game for St. Louis Park. Here's the Long ball opportunity by the Red Knights. Tatterin giving chase. And it will be played out by the Orioles for a, oh, it stays in. Yeah, Tatarek took that kick to move it down the line. So getting some action here. Catapotis now with the step. Fights Panic. Oh, it's a beautiful ball to Mass. She's under control. Catapotis giving Chase. Yeah. Huber defending. Oh, looked like uh, Capos getting away with a little bit of a tug there. Yeah, it looked like a. Let's give you a throw in for the Red Knights as they get ready to make a substitution. Or three. Number 17, Allie Hoffman. Number six, Mar Noble. So Marin Noble and Ali Coughlin return to the game for the Red Knights. Coughlin will slide back into that sweeper position as the ball is thrown in. It's like Vanderhyde in the corner with Panic giving her the option of support. She neglects and it's cleared out. Takes a weird hop on the turf. And Kiara Klacko will take it and find space. Well, okay. Here's Jerf kind of stopped that one. Looked like it was going to. Here's Panic's through ball. And Tatarek lofts it back into the center to McManus. And uh, Jerf kicking it in the center. Ali Simonette kicking it outside. Marin Noble now finds Katie Oppenheimer. As it's played back. And out for an Orioles throw in. <coughs> And Liss is taking a move here. 
Orioles are just, yeah. on, they get that one through ball. Now here's a chance. Yeah. yeah Offside. That was looking offsides to me from this angle. So offsides called the second one on the Red Knights. And it will be a free kick for the Orioles at about the 30 yard line. And they elect for the short play. The crossing and Huber's kind of cutting through a little bit out. Here's a dangerous ball. Coughlin doesn't get all of it. It's going to be a throw in deep, somewhat deep in the Red Knight territory. Jerf with the throw in. She likes to play to back. Huber. And Jerf across. Roloff going after it. Just stops it before the Red Knight could get it. And, and here come the Red Knights now. Panic and heads it towards Tatter and it's a play back to Roffler. Yeah, Tatarik uses her goalie to make a play. Takes a weird deflection off Mass's knee. And it's going to be a goal kick. As we have three Red Knights now Red coming Knights, into the game. Number seven, Andrea Saavedra. Now we're a little over halfway through this uh, second half. So Burns, Maria Van Hove, and Andrea Saavedra come into the game for the Red Knights. 17.50 remaining in the game. 3 nothing Red Knights. Panic, Vanderheide, and Tadron all recording goals. Here's Maria Van Hove for the Red Knights. Looks to get a cross in. Went out before it was touched by Rothler, and it will be a goal kick for the Orioles. Collision in the midfield, that'll be a free kick Mitter. for the Orioles. And Tatarik moving up. Quick pass to Huber to move it downfield. And Tatarik, quick kick into the red knight and throw out and try to get something going here. The defense trying to move it up. Barger with it for the red knights. Plays it back to Kira Clacko. Clacko finds Burns, and now Van Hove will make a run down the line. Uh, List defending, pass back to the goalie. And Roffler just kicks it out. Maybe had a little time there to possibly take a touch and look for a teammate or a better option, but still gets it out of harm's way as Barger will take the throw in. And now, Clever comp running with it, and uh, McManus kind of crossing it all the way across the field for Park here. A little bit of time to stop and look. Jerf kicking it up. Yeah. Coughlin gets all of that header. Header stopped there. Burns to Clacko. It's a step by Liss. Yeah, it was kind of a quick back move, but not able to get it through. Go, Martin. Come on, Martin. Martin Noble now for dangerous ball. There's Tatter looking for speed. Here's a shot. Rothler with the save. Tatter in disbelief. She did not finish that one. It's the Red Knights' tenth shot on goal. Rothler making eight, not seven saves, and with a nice, impressive one right there. Martin yeah. Noble. <laughs> I think Roffler is gaining that uh, work with the defense where the defender is running side by side to mm -hmm. keep the shot going in the right direction. Just one of those, like, you never know what can happen. It could take a deflection yep. even off your defender. And yeah, you never know. This is one of those things you just got to be comfortable with. I think yeah. you're a goalie, so you can understand being comfortable with your, uh, your defensive line. Yeah. Uh, 
out on, probably looked like Matty Bremner there as they were fighting for the ball. Red Knight throw. Noble finds Van Hove. Saavedra makes a run down the line. It's a great through ball to Saavedra. Saavedra looking to possibly make a little move. Unable to, and it deflects off her. It's going to be a throw in for the Orioles. With St. Louis Park making once again another substitution. Samantha Bear coming in. Samantha Bear, another ninth grader for the team, uh, one of the track stars of the team. Ali Simonet running up trying to take that ball. Burns outside the Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer plays it in. Here's Tadron. Unable to get the shot off. And Tateric blocked it and kicked it out of there. So the ball goes out and it will be a throw in for Red Knights taken by Oppenheimer. Here's Tattering. She finds Clacklin and Miller's a shot. Rothrow with the save. She'll elect to take the punt. Gets it up to Adelman. Adelman trying to take it kind of backwards, pass back to Tateric, and then pass it up to Liss. And there's a turnover, Saavedra. Shot, here's a shot. Roth with the save. And Van Ho follows up. So two more saves for Rothler. Great sequence of goalkeeper right there. Saavedra got the shot. Gave up a rebound and she was quick on her feet to get in front of the Van Ho shot. Does draw a corner kick though. The 11th of the game for the Red Knights. In comparison, the Orioles have zero. Barger will take the corner for the Red Knights. Barger plays it in. It's a nice line drive. Coughlin got her head to it. Sends it through the uprights for a goal kick. Now we're down to 11 minutes or so of this game, so... Uh, Looks like they're changing goalie for St. Louis Park. Kennedy Helberg, the senior. So Rothler on the game finishes with nine saves as Helberg will come into the game for the Orioles. Probably get a little bit of work with the way the Red Knights have been attacking lately. As Noble turns it over in the midfield. But it's kicked out, it will be a throw in for the Red Knights, taken by Barger. Barger plays it up. Takes a bounce and Tatterin holds on. <laughs> Saavedra looking for a white shirt to pass to. And she elects to play it back to Kira Klatko. Klatko finds Ombre and Barger's unable to get it, but she's got plenty of time as we reach 10 minutes left in today's game. Three nothing Red Knights lead. Yeah, Kennedy, Kennedy Helberg, the goalie there, is known for really long kicks. Maybe uh, that change was made so that she could try to maybe loft one out there for the forwards to move with. Looking to possibly 
strength in St. Louis Park's counterattack game. Just trying to possibly get on the scoreboard here as Barger makes a run down line. And Tatera collects it, moves it back to Kennedy. So they're already comfortable with the new goalie, playing it back and forth. Nice job there to keep possession for the Orioles as they look to build. Bear to Huber and Bear's running it down. Barger's and there, draw the throw in. So Huber taking the throw for St. Louis Park with uh, nine minutes left. So Vajra providing pressure in the back and it results in a throw in for the Red Knights. Knights moving the ball is Noble. Kicked out, it will be another throw in for the Red Knights. And in the game for the Red Knights, number 14, Megan Catapotis. Number 15, Jordan Mattis. Number 19, Kelly Panic. So Panic. Mattis and Catapotis return into the game for the Red Knights with eight minutes left. Saavedra traps the ball. Plays it to Catapotis. Ball goes through and over. Clacko there to collect. Maria Van Ho finds Saavedra. Yeah, Tatarik moving it down, is able to take the ball from her and move it in the center field here. St. Louis Park tries to pass it down and forward's not able to penetrate that defense. Orioles looking to switch the field, but Oppenheimer's there. And it goes out, throw in St. Louis Park. Uh, Brubaker taking the throw. The Orioles, number four. A substitution for Edelman coming in. <laughs> Edelman runs all the way across and throws it, kicks it down the line there. Clever camp kicks it in the middle. But again, Park gets it down in the zone. Just unable to get a strong opportunity here. Here's a, maybe a through ball chance and the Red Knights handle it easily. Catapotis with a nifty touch. That's back in the defensive and zone. Huber passes it to Tarek in the center. Tarek settles it, crosses over. And Brubaker's moving it up. He's got some room, passes it down the line. Not able to uh, Back in that corner, so it's... Coughlin was trying to let it roll out for a goal kick there. Didn't quite make it. And as a result, she had to play it, and it results in a throw-in for the Orioles deep in Red Knight territory. Well, an opportunity for the Orioles. They've got their defense up to midfield right now. This. Panic trying to show off her a little... Tricks in the midfield right there. Now she's got plenty of space. And is dispossessed. It was crossing. Adelman kicks it up in the air. Allie Coughlin plays to Oppenheimer. Out of bounds. Throw in Orioles. Five minutes remaining in this North Suburban Conference rivalry game. 3 nothing. Benilde St. Margaret's. Bremner up, but a header back. Yeah, St. Louis Park's able to move it around at times, just not able to get that final penetration. But here's one going wide there. It's a race. And uh, the Red Knights elect to kick it out. 
Yeah, St. Louis Park again to that ball. They will have a player in the middle that they could have possibly laid it off to. And instead, I think they'll be happy to sell for a throw in. Samantha Bear throwing it in. Oh. Unfortunate touch there, and we'll have another substitution by the Red Knights. Number two, Emily Schmitz. So, Emily Schmitz entering the game for the Red Knights. Probably the last substitution we we will see from either team. With uh, four minutes left, time is uh, winding down. So Kiara Clacko is moved to forward now for the Red Knights. She's listed as a defender in the program. So we'll see if she's able to possibly make some runs. She has shown some speed in the back. So she has lots of the necessary skills to be a, an efficient striker for the Red Knights. So Huber does a little backward move there and passes it. Uh, nobody down the sideline to gather that up for Park. Schmitz takes the throw and finds Capos. Capos, a high lofting kick over. And Adelman down. Oh. <laughs> Coughlin making a step, but she loses possession. Yep. Clever camp moving it down the line here if she can. And out to Adelman for a cross. Well, takes a deflection. Coughlin miss hits. Well, St. Louis Park with a throw deep in the territory with uh, two and a half minutes left. And I was wrong about no more substitutions as. Elena Basil entered the game for the Red Knights. Number six, Marin Noble. So Noble checks it for the Red Knights. Basil for the Orioles. 2-10 remaining in the game. I know the time is critical. I think St. Louis Park's coach saw the Red Knights sub subbing and thought they'd sub two there. Oh, it looks like a corner for St. Louis Park. Berg came out and just didn't quite get the handle she wanted on it. Goes out, it will be a corner kick for Orioles. Corner kick for the Orioles. It's their first of the game. Well, Tatarek taking the corner. She uh, kicked the corner right in front of the goal that was scored for uh, during the Cooper game. Why the ball went out onto some other field there. So th uh, precious seconds are uh, ticking <laughs> off here. St. Louis Park has only two defenders back. Red Knights with Nine players in the box to defend this corner. But here it is, a little low, but. And now here come the Red Knights. Clacko, it's played back. back. Back to Huber and up, so. So they handle it, Barker with an acrobatic minute. touch. One minute. One minute, uh, it's kind of like the energy. <laughs> well, it can. Pretty good contention of St. Louis Park fans have remained. I bet you they'd like to see their squad pick up a goal, get something to cheer about. They sure would. There's a lot of pressure getting put on right now. Barger's follow be a free kick for the Red Knights. It's played right away with Schmidt's getting a touch to panic in the a middle. Amy Schultz in there playing the ball for her park. Here's Oppenheimer. Seven seconds left, probably the last chance, and it's cleared. Oh, panic comes out with it. Two, one, and Time. that is the game. The Red Knights pick up a three nothing win over the Orioles. To improve to 10, 3, and 1. St. Louis Park falls to 6, 6, and 1.
St. Louis Park's next game is this Thursday versus Columbia Heights. Well, the Red Knights' next game is at Fridley this Thursday in what will be the last game of the North Suburban Conference season for both these teams. So the Red Knights pick up a 3 nothing win over their inner city rival, St. Louis Park. I'm Andrew Berklin and Dale to Derek. It was nice Very working good. with you. And from Park TV, thank you and have a great night. And thank you.